and welcome back to my channel. Better late than never, I am bringing you my November monthly reading wrap up. It's almost a month late, but you know what? Sometimes it just is what it is. I read a total of 10 books in the month of November, which is pretty good for me. It's about average. The first book that I read this month was Britney Spears's The Woman in Me. I'm really proud of this. I have this very cool UK indie bookshop edition that has these sprayed edges that say Britney. As far as memoirs go, I love a memoir. And Britney Spears is a big part of my childhood growing up. I am a millennial. And it's very difficult to rate a memoir because this is someone's personal memories. So I didn't really attach a like star rating to this, but I did really enjoy it. And I tend to really enjoy memoirs. I really like them a lot. It was great. It's not very long. And it was very interesting to hear Brittany's perspective on the things that I remember happening when I was a kid. So, really enjoyed this, and I'm super happy to have this really cool edition. The next book that I read is one that I started a couple months ago, but I ended up finishing it this month, and that was Morning Glory Milking Farm. Listen. Listen. This not for everybody. I'm not sure it was for me, but it was a good time. <laughs> I love a monster romance, and this one started out like really sweet and innocent, and then it just got real raunchy. <laughs> as far as monster romances go, I think this one was really great. I enjoyed it, and if you like monster romances, chances are you're gonna enjoy this one as well. The next book that I read in the month of November it's Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. I cannot say enough good things about John Gwynn and this series. Now this is only the second John Gwynn book that I have read. This was absolutely phenomenal. It is pretty rare for me that a second book in a series is just as good as the first and this was just as good as the first. It was heart-wrenching. The battle scenes, the battle scenes in this, holy cow. And Orca, Orca is, well, she's my favorite character, but let me tell you, Elvar in this one, she is not messing around. She's not messing around. This is so good. I cannot wait for the next book to come out. I, and it's projected like it's being predicted as coming out next year towards the end of the year, like in the fall. This is so good. If you have not read John Gwynn, and if you like really intense battle scenes, um, if you like really well-written characters, um, really amazing fantasy based on Norse myth mythology, this is it. This is the one for you. It's thick but it flies by. When I was reading this, I never felt like, like, oh my God, I'm only halfway through the book. I was like, oh my God, I'm halfway through the book. Like, <sighs> this is so good. This was so good. Next book that I read. I, I it was so, um, it's so interesting, the juxtaposition between reading John Gwynn and then reading this. This is a trashy romanticy and I am here for it. So much stuff happened in this book. It was good, I enjoyed it, but it was an absolutely bonkers ride. And like, this is kind of one of those like turn off your brain books. This is not a brain book. John Gwynn is a brain book, you wanna use your brain. This is a turn off your brain book, okay? You're just here for the vibes. You're here because it's like eating potato chips. But I really enjoyed this and I am very excited for the third book. I hope that the third book is a little bit more coherent. I hope that the third book um, makes better character choices. There were some things that happened in this book that just really took me out and I was like, I'm not like understanding where that came from with some of the characters. But overall, I enjoyed this and I am excited to read the next one when it comes out. I assume sometime next year. Next, I read an arc of The Witch Would Not by Olivia Atwater. 
I love Olivia Atwood's uh, Atwater's writing. I really enjoyed Half a Soul that I read from her. It was very exciting to me that this book was sort of in the same realm. What I like most about Olivia Atwater's books are someone described them, I heard it on TikTok, being described as cozy fantasy with teeth. And I think that's really accurate. Like it's like almost cozy, but not quite. And this one was a little bit darker than Half a Soul. It was kind of a lot darker than Half a Soul. And what else I liked is that Olivia Atwater gives you just enough to leave you wanting more, but the story is complete. I don't know if that makes sense, but I really enjoyed this. And this came out, this came out in November. So if you'd like to read this, it is available now. The next book that I read was the third book in the Katie Robert Dragonfly series. I don't have a copy of it, but I do have the first two. It's called The, Gar the Gargoyles Captive. Again, these books, they're fun. Monster Romance is not for everybody, but it is for me. <laughs> and this one was another great installation into this series, and I am so excited to continue reading. I think there's... There's one more book that's out in this series and there's one that's coming out at the beginning of next year and I I can't wait to read them. So, love this. It's like a romance and it's got a good plot, but it's like just enough plot to keep you going, but not so much plot that it gets in the way of the romance. These are great. I read Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Robert. This has been a Katie Robert year for me I really enjoyed this. <laughs> there was a little bit more political scheming, a little bit more plotting to go along with the romance in this one, which I really appreciated. It was silly though. Like it was, it was silly. And honestly, if you're reading these books, you're not reading them for the plot. Um, but this one had a plot and I enjoyed that. So this was great. And if you like Katie Roberts other books, you're gonna like this one too. It is a little bit darker uh, than like the Dragon's Bride and those. It's a little bit more intense. Um, the relationship is a little bit more problematic. Not necessarily problematic, it's not the quite, quite the right word, but it's a little bit more like, mm, I don't know if I would find myself in that situation, but it's still a good time. I read Fire with Fire by Destiny Soria. This one kind of took me by surprise. Uh, when I started this one, I did not think that I was going to like it as much as I did, but I did enjoy it. It is a series. I don't know if the next book in the series has come out yet, but this one kind of left in a place where I don't feel like I need to continue the series. Like it was, it felt like the story wrapped up. There is more story that could happen, but for me, it felt like it really wrapped up with this one and I like that. This is a YA, two sisters who are dragon hunters. One of them finds out she has a soul bond. Like it didn't make any sense to me. I guess, you know, it did make a little bit of sense, but not really. And it just felt like Riley Saker was like grasping at straws to like make this twistier. I enjoyed this, but it wasn't great. Not my favorite Riley Saker. Out of the two that I've read, I liked Home Before Dark better, but this was good. Very Lizzie Borden, which is kind of the vibe that it was supposed to give, so. And the last book that I read in the month of November was Song of Blood and Stone by El Penelope. This was very interesting to me. It's a four book series and I really, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was going to be more fantasy, but it was more of a romance in the two main characters. And I, I really enjoyed it. The writing was really great. The story like 
kept me. It this book we follow Jasminda, and she is an earth singer. Earth singers, it seems to me, can do a lot of things. Like they have good, like they're like connected to the earth, and they I guess it's through singing songs. I'm not actually a hundred percent clear. They can affect people's emotions. They can heal people. They can do all kinds of stuff. She's an earth singer, and there's in the two kingdoms, you know, that she's like part of are kind of like warring with each other. And she meets Jack, who she finds out is a spy. She ends up helping him and he turns out to be a prince. They fall in love. This was really good. I enjoyed this and I, I am looking forward to reading the next books in the series. It felt more about Jasminda and Jack coming together than it did about the fantasy plot. That was everything that I read in November. Better late than never. <laughs> so far, December has been a really great reading month and I am excited to share with you everything that I read in December, which will hopefully be on time. Anyways, if you read anything great, please let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.